During the Quaternary, the geographic distribution of plants was shaped by dramatic changes in the global climate. The Quaternary marks the final phase in the evolution of land plants before the great modification of terrestrial environments caused by human activity over the past few thousand years. The Quaternary was a time or rapid climatic change that had profound effects on global vegetation, and as the climate changed, it had a major impact on where new plants could establish themselves. The cumulative effect over hundreds, or thousands, of years is seen as migration, with plants staying in step with the climatic conditions in which they grow best. Successive expansion and contraction of ice sheets and glaciers in the northern hemisphere during the Quaternary resulted in successive southerly and northerly migrations by different species. One effect of these migrations was significant regional extinction, especially in Europe, where east-west running mountain ranges partly blocked migration routes to the south. The strong similarities between the rich temperate forests in China and those of eastern North America largely reflect the elimination of many species from Europe during the late Neogene and Quaternary. Fossil evidence shows that many of these plants, such as the tulip tree, flourished in Europe until relatively recently. There were also late Neogene and Quaternary regional extinctions in western North America, most likely due to the increasingly fry climate. Many of our most familiar landscapes have been modified to a greater or lesser extent by human action. This trend is destined to continue, with the loss of much of the great diversity that has accumulated over more than 450 million years of land plant evolution. These fresh, or brackish water plants possess both algal and higher plant characteristics, which makes them an isolated group between the green algae and the bryophytes, Whole plant remains are extremely scarce, although their reproductive organs, called gyrogonites and utricles, are much more common. The plants are bushy and up to 1 meter long. Individual shoots are only 1 millimeter wide and organized in short lengths called internodes with whorls of branches arising at the joints. The Chirales has an extensive fossil record, first appearing in the late Silurian and Diversif. Ying during the Devonian and the Carboniferous the genus Chara first appeared during the early Paleogene. Marchantia are liverworts which make up a major part of the bryophyte group some resemble leafy mosses while others have a flattened body called a thallus spores similar to those of liverworts are in evidence from the Ordovician onward with the earliest fossils appearing in the Devonian by the late Triassic there were forms similar to Marchantia and many more are known from the Cretaceous and the Tertiary. Commonly called peat moss sphagnum has between 150 and 300 species it occurs mainly in the northern hemisphere as far north as Svalbard Norway but also in the cool and wet regions of the southern hemisphere its leaves have a lattice of small green photosynthetic cells and larger dead cells that have a capacity to hold large quantities of water sphagnum can build up great thicknesses of peat through its ability to increase the acidity of its surroundings which prevents decay by bacterial and fungal activity when rainfall is high sphagnum bogs can grow into domes above the level of the water table sphagnum like plants are known from the Russian Permian but sphagnum itself probably arose in the Jurassic. This creeping moss has tapering leaves that end in fine points it grows and divides irregularly and horizontally to form a mat of interlocking filaments there are about 15 species and all prefer moist temperate climates the earliest record of fossil amblystegium is in the early Neogene of southern Germany and there are a number of records of it in the Quaternary. Cupersia is a simple club moss and perhaps one of the most primitive vascular plants living today it has small spirally arranged leaves and instead of kines like other club mosses Cupersia has zones of spore producing structures in the leaf axils nearly 400 species exist in temperate and tropical regions worldwide Cupersia represents a lineage of living plants that stretches back to Devonian genera such as Asteroxylon the living species of Cupersia probably evolved diversified and spread during the Paleogene and Neogene. Break time equals 0.4 s. Greater than Andreaea is one of the two genera of mosses that are commonly found on granite rock faces in northern mountainous regions in the Arctic. Their hair-like, rooting rhizoids can penetrate small cracks in the rock and the plants from small, wind-resistant cushions. There are up to 100 species of Andreaea. Fossil mosses are known from the Carboniferous onward, but there are no undisputed records Andreaea before the Quaternary. The group that includes Meritia is the most primitive or living ferns, 
having large leaves that are enclosed when young by two basal scales, their sporangia are large and borne in clusters on the undersides of the fronds, the group can be traced back to numerous Carboniferous and Permian fossil stems and foliage, the best known of these is the tree fern called Saronius, the earliest fossils referred to as Meridia come from the Jurassic of Yorkshire, in northern England, where there are also specimens of another similar living genus, Angiopteris, the earliest of these ferns probably grew near streams, and they spread into other wetland and humid habitats as they underwent evolutionary changes and the habitats changed, the cooling of the climate during the late Neogene and Quaternary caused their extinction in the temperate regions of the world, limiting the remaining 26 species to the tropics. Millennia carulia, purple moor gas that forms large swards in places that are at least seasonally wet, it is found on heaths, moors, bogs, fens and cliffs, its purple flower heads give it its common name, this grass grows best in the wettest areas and can dominate large parts of bogs and moors, where it contributes to the growths of peat. Sections through peat from both the Quaternary and today's bogs and moors reveal layers that are densely packed with leaves of this species. The 45 living species of ephedra are woody shrubs. It belong to the same group of gymnosperms that includes netum and velvicia. Ephedra has both seed-producing and pollen-producing cones, its pollen is distinctive, with variable thickenings producing longitudinal ridges and grooves. Similar pollen first appeared in the Permian, but more reliable pollen is known from the Cretaceous. Cotong. Grasses are actually sedges, and not grasses. Ereoforum is a genus with about 25 species. It is found in acid bog habitats throughout the temperate northern hemisphere but in particular in the higher latitude Arctic tundra. They are herbaceous and perennial, spreading by underground stems, their bisexual flowers are on stalks and produce masses of seeds that are covered in fluffy cotton, which allows the wind to carry them. The sedge family is known from the early Neogene, where flower parts of Carex have been found in Nebraska, but remains of Ereoforum are only found in quaternary interglacial and postglacial peat. Layers of Ereoforum leaves and rhizomes occur in such peat, representing a time when the plants dominated the bog surface. Fossil leaves that are similar to those of living Davidia show that it was prominent in the early Paleogene vegetation of western North America, and suggests that the family had its origins in the Cretaceous. Fossil fruits matured from flower heads that appear to have been born between two large bracts, as in the living genus, Davidia spread to eastern Russia and China during the Paleogene and Neogene, and narrowly survived extinction during the Quaternary Ice Ages, there is only one living species in this genus. There are about 15 species of Coralus, or Hazel, from northern temperate regions, all are bushes, exo the Turkish and Chinese Hazels, which are trees, they are deciduous and have male flowers in catkins and female flowers enclosed within buds, Coralus avalana was an early colonizer after the retreat of the Quaternary glaciers. The pollen and ornately shaped, nut-like fruits of Trapa have been found across the northern hemisphere, Evidence of the genus stretches back from the present to the early Neogene. Each fruit has a single, very large, starchy seed that contains toxins. However, these toxins are destroyed during cooking, and trapa seeds are known to have been used as a food source fought thousands of years by early people in present-day Europe and China, with the oldest recorded use being by the nomadic Megalmajan people. These people lived in northern Europe around 10,000 to 8,000 years ago. Tilia are large, deck. Iguous trees that are now spread across the temperate regions of the northern hemisphere, except in northwest America. Their fossils may be leaves, flower parts, wood or pollen grains. The fossil leaves shown here are heart-shaped impressions in the surface of the rock, with no original plant material remaining. Some leaves landed the right way up, which resulted in their veins becoming embedded into the rock. Those that landed upside down show the smoother upper surface on the rock. The five veins that depart from the base of each leaf branch into secondary veins, a further transverse network of smaller veins is visible between them. 